Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Theresa May has defended the extension of the government's flagship welfare reform amid concerns even from her own backbenches. The Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, says universal credit, which merges six working age benefits into one single payment, is driving up debt, poverty and homelessness. Our social affairs correspondent, Michael Buchanan, has met one young woman who's had to sell virtually all her possessions. As eight months after first claiming the credit, she's still not received a penny. Hi, Holly. Hi, uh... When you've nothing, small mercies can mean everything. This is Holly Sargent's umpteenth food parcel. She first applied for universal credit eight months ago. She's still waiting for her first payment. Without her mother's help, she'd be destitute. How have you got by beyond your mother? What else have you had to do? Stuff. She's sold up with herself. everything she owns. She's sold everything. She's sold her telly. She's sold her mobile phone. She, she's sold everything. So what, why have you got a telly in the corner that doesn't work? Because it makes it look more homey. It doesn't look like a gap, like something's missing. Holly sold her working TV to make £40. This broken one came from a friend. Basically, the next thing to go is going to be the sofa. And I'll be sitting on the table. Admin failures with universal credit, problems at the job centre and Holly's vulnerable mental health, all contributing to eight miserable months. As a parent, it's soul destroying to listen to your daughter on the phone telling you she's starving, I'm sorry. And not being able to physically help her. The problems now with universal credit were predicted in the Welsh Valleys three years ago. A housing association here took part in a government commissioned research project which showed just 6% of housing benefit recipients had any savings. The social housing provider warned ministers people would struggle to go weeks without money. They knew it in 2014. It's inexcusable really that in 2017 we've got a ship that sailed on, in terms of universal credit full service coming in but the lifeboats haven't yet been built and they're only now being launched after the event. For charities tackling poverty in one of the poorest areas in Britain, universal credit is yet another challenge. Daily, they meet the families who simply can't cope. These people are suffering, and we shouldn't be having that. So people like us need to voice, stand up for everybody, and stop it. Sorry. Hi, Holly. Back at Holly's flat, her support worker Beth arrives to begin another universal credit claim. This will be the tenth claim and she's had no money since February, nothing at all. Every time I see Holly, you can see a little bit more has changed in her and that's awful to see. I'm there to help and I physically am struggling to help her. Holly's lack of money means her son, who lives with her mum, is no longer able to stay the night. What's been the worst part for you? Not being able to see my son. I can't sit and watch this for much longer, it's so horrific. It's come to a point where my child doesn't even know who I am. And all she's asking for is £54 a week. Well, Michael, it's just harrowing to hear that story. I mean, universal credit, simplifying the benefits, was generally welcomed by most. So what's gone wrong? And it still is. The principle is still welcomed by most people in need for that very reason. It simplifies the benefit system and brings six of them into one monthly payment. Now, what the government are saying is that for 
uh, the vast majority of people it is working well, that they are being paid within the expected six-week period, that they have evidence that it is moving people into work faster and keeping them in work longer than, than previous benefits would have done. And if you are in a job and move on to universal credit, then you have potentially got some savings. The problem they are having is with the most vulnerable people who are uh, currently on some benefits who can't work or either can't find work. When they apply, their benefits stop, and then they typically have to wait up to six weeks for that money. And what they are finding is that these people simply can't cope with that length of time. And that study I referred to, that was a government commission study. So in 2014, the research was there to prove that people on housing benefit didn't have, the vast majority of them didn't have any money. Now, what ministers are saying, look, if you're, if you're struggling for money, you can get an advance payment. But what typically, what, what is happening in a lot of places, I should say, is that people are saying we're not being told about this advance payment. And even when we get it, we have to begin to pay it almost immediately, leaving us financially short. Okay, Michael, thank you. Labour launched a fierce attack on Theresa May today over the cost of families seeking help with universal credit. It's emerged that people needing assistance with the new benefit are being charged up to 55 pence a minute to call a helpline. Our political correspondent Paul Brand reports. Welcome to Universal Credit. You may be charged for this call. At the if Joe King wants her benefits, she says she effectively has to pay for them. She's called this premium number every month for over a year, complaining her universal credit keeps being delayed, spending as long as an hour on the phone each time. They've deducted £80 a month already because of the benefits cap. They might as well take a £10 a month at least in advance for all the phone calls you've got to take and then let you do it for free. Because that's basically what you're doing. You're paying a fortune to ring them. Calls to the helpline cost up to nine pence a minute from a landline, but as much as 55p from a mobile. On average, people spend 15 minutes on the phone, which could add up to around eight pounds per call. Well, universal credit we know is already pushing people into debt. If you then add on top uh, of having, having to pay these uh, premium rate uh, phone calls, it's just unsustainable. It's an added burden, uh, pushing people more and more into debt. And a government policy shouldn't be doing that. The response from the Department for Work and Pensions is that most of the problems can be solved online. That's the way the system has been designed. And if anyone really is worried about the cost of the phone line, well, the operator can call them back, which does beg the question why it isn't just free in the first place. Universal Credit tops up your earnings when you start work or increase your hours. It was supposed to simplify benefits to make sure work always pays. But in many cases, Universal Credit hasn't paid at all, with six-week delays for some benefits, as the rollout even begins to upset Conservatives. MPs are starting to see people come into their constituency surgeries experiencing firsthand as this is being rolled out across the country more people are getting a taste of it and that's why I think it's becoming a really live issue because people are starting to live with this. To make a claim or for general information about universal credit please go to... Jo says her payment is now regular. The government says most people's are. It insists it makes no money from this phone line but someone's charging a price few can afford. Paul Brand, ITV News. I'll be a